Good morning and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. I'm Tahir Salam. Good morning and welcome. I'm Cecilia Amogwe. Good to have you join us once again to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonapan. The 2016 Rio Olympics, we will not stop talking about it. What were the major talking points for Team Nigeria? What can the IOC do to make Tokyo 2020 a remarkable event? Was still on the Olympics. Yeah, definitely so much to talk about today. And of course from the Olympics now, what's happening to Team Nigeria? I'm talking about the Super Eagles. One man who will be with the squad when they face Tanzania might not just be there. I'm talking about Kelechi Yenacho. Yesterday he got injured during the game, uh, during the Champions League match between Manchester City and Star Brookers. Mm, yeah, Cecilia, Austin, hopefully it's nothing too serious, but yeah. it looks like a hamstring injury and we all know how uh, complicated uh, that I can get. So all the best to uh, Kelichi Nyanacho as he tries to recover from this particular injury. Also on the show, uh, of course, uh, we just talked about the Champions League playoffs. Now we go to the Champions League proper where, you know, today is the draw for the group stage featuring 32 clubs and it will be held in Monaco and that's where the likes of uh, Real Madrid, uh, Barcelona, Leicester, Bayern, mm. Juventus, Benfica, all the big wow. teams, wow. you know, we'll be looking ahead to uh, to seeing who they will play that's in right. the group stage. That's right. And for Leicester City, yeah, we well, can be right to say anticipate. Incredible, right? The first time they're coming into the Champions League yeah. in Pot 1. Incredible, yeah. Incredible Pot one. stuff, Tyler. Can you yeah, imagine? I mean, Kutsi, you know, by virtue yeah. of being champions of England, yeah. and they've earned uh, the right uh, to be in Pot 1 alongside those are other uh, big clubs I just mentioned. It's, I, I mean, the fairy tale. Uh, it, it continues. Is, I mean, it continues, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a totally different adventure. Leicester is in part two. Mm. Leicester yeah. is in part one. Yeah, I mean, straightforward. Um, straightforward. They're champions of England. That's why. I, okay. I, I don't know. Manchester City, you know, sometimes when you had to go through, you know, qualifiers and all that mm. and get into the group stage, somehow you just be in a very, very tough draw. Yeah. Uh, what Pep Guardiola is capable, he can. So no matter the group is going to find himself, I know definitely they can get into the knockout stage. That's what's we'll important see. for him. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see about that. Right? Yeah. 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 Because how never it was for them the, the, the last season, you know, getting out of the group and then advancing at the competition. Okay, let's talk Olympics now. I mean, members of the uh, Olympic refugee team, they're back home talking about the ones that are residing in Kenya who found yeah. uh, Nairobi their new home. Mm. They returned home and it was a huge welcome for them. And they said, look, it's not just about the medals. I mean, they, they may have gone and not winning a medal, mm. but participating alone, you know, it's something huge for them. It's worth more than the medals they could have won. They also have a chef, the mission, I mean, <laughs> in Kenya, yeah. who talked about, you know, how they put up a good performance when they got there. And of course, the welcome they got back to their camp and it was just really heartwarming knowing that yes they have a place they belong and five of them were actually returned to nairobi uh, originally from south sudan without that. their national anthem without their own you know flag at the olympics but they had that of the, the olympics a team and also the olympic flag that was all they had at the olympics just look at the celebrations <laughs> know, Tyre, we kept saying it even before the the games that their lives will never remain the no, same so I'm just so just try and so imagine these guys 10 years ago, you know, who we were they, you know, who used to talk about them, fast forward to about <laughs> even two years ago when yeah. it wasn't even sure if they were going to have a refugee Olympics team. Now they are heroes. In Kenya, they are as popular as the president now. <laughs> everyone is celebrating them. And they yeah. didn't even get a bronze medal. No, but we didn't. told you guys it was about inclusion yes. and it's about promoting the spirit of the games. Yeah, yeah. surely, Austin. And um, that's what we saw at the games. Mm. And the, unfortunately, okay, no, I don't want to use that word. Uh, but they didn't get to win a medal like, you know, we were all, you know, open for that upset. It mm. didn't happen. Mm. Uh, but um, it's all about them actually going there to participate. You know, and enjoy the experience. I mean, these guys um, would never have, have had the chance of going to an Olympic Games um, if it wasn't for this initiative by the International uh, oh, Olympic uh, Committee. So it's a good one. And let's not forget the inspirational effects you could have on other uh, refugees as well, to the ones that are still in camps. And I'm sure a lot of them will start targeting, you know, uh, subsequent games as well, to so right. they can go and show mm. uh, what they can do uh, in terms of the sporting abilities. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. Okay, let's listen to them how joyful they were just participating at the Olympics alone. Our people, but there are talent inside, like our people, and therefore the National Olympics and all over the world should also uh, em emulate what the Kenyan uh, National Olympic uh, Committee and also our government that they have given this opportunity for these athletes to participate and show their talent in Rio. I feel 
very excited because it is our first time for the refugees to participate in Olympic because it was our first time to be given the, this opportunity to participate. So when you get that chance also, uh, you use it in the right way uh, by remembering your, your fellow refugees who are in the camps uh, because uh, uh, we have come up from Rio but we, we have to go to the camps because we promised that we, we will go back to the camp to to, to, to give them a message also about the, the Rio. Yeah, it's not about giving them a message. Of course, they're happy they're back home. They are right now Olympians. And maybe when they are able to, you know, get go back to their own country, uh, talking about South Sudan, maybe in the next Olympics, they will just be competing on their own plug. Who knows what will happen in that yeah. one? Yeah, right? That it's so, possible. That would be so <laughs> sweet. And then to give, you know, the whole concept of having this Olympics refugee team a totally different yes. meaning. The IOC can start looking at ways that they can brand that. Because Tyro won't even understand, Cecilia, the value of what having this refugees Olympic team has done. I mean, the emotions that even comes out of it that yeah. you're having people that they've looked at every part of the world and they're saying that it's finished, it's ended for them and their sports just says no. You can still go. There's a chance for you. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay, from there, move straight to tennis. I mean, we're talking about the Lava Cup right now. There's going to be a Lava Cup. It's more like what we have in Ryder Cup in mm -hmm. golf. But this time around is tennis great. Uh, you have a Europe versus the rest of the world. It's going to start next year, September. And big stars are definitely going to be participating. Roger Federer said it's going to be there. Of course, Rafael Nadal is going to be there. And the big shot, Bjorn Bogut, of course, uh, John Macro, both of them who have actually met 22 times Legend. during their celebrated tennis mm. rivalry will also want to break their 11 head-to-head -head record tie. They are going to be captain, you know, the Europe team and of course world teams in the inaugural Lover Cup next year. So it's going to be really interesting because you're going to be seeing, I mean, these two great guys captaining two different sides. And you're going to be having the likes of Roger Fedra, who is returning from injury, he said he's going to be back in uh, Australian Open, hopefully, and of course, Rafael Nadal who enjoyed the Olympics and all of them, you know, talking about the rivalry they're gonna face when the Lava Cup starts. I was almost, almost gonna say, yeah, no, it's just so sweet, you know, these guys they won't stop giving us, you know, things to talk about having your bug and yeah. John McEnroe. What haven't they seen playing tennis, you know, and having them as captains to come, you know, promote the Lava Cup? Yeah, even looking at it is Rafael Nadal and, 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 and um, uh, oh, Roger Federer. <laughs> Like they're sitting, they're sitting by the side of their daddy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just makes it look all good, and um, that would be good tennis. Love to see them, you know, play, you know, just for the love of the game. Yeah, mm. that's what it's going to be. You're going to be having four matches be played. Four matches will be played each day. Three singles and one doubles, and each player will play at least one singles match, and at least four of the six players must play doubles. So it's going to be really interesting. I just can't yeah. wait. It's next year. We still have like. A year, more than a year ahead, but these yeah. guys have confirmed that they will be playing in this particular tournament. Okay, let's listen to them. I got plenty of time now, so it almost doesn't matter how I feel right now, but I'm doing well and I'm, I've been training as much as I possibly could um, to re, re strengthen my, my quad and just my body to keep it in shape. So when I head back into the gym for full on fitness in the next couple of months, then I'm ready for it. And um, it's been it's an interesting year, to say the least. My God, I never thought that I was going to have a year uh, the way I had it, you know, after playing as well as I did in Australia. But it's unfortunate how it goes sometimes, and I think um, I'll learn a lot from this year, and I remain very upbeat and uh, positive about what's, what's to come. So just happy to be in New York in a way. It's, it's painful uh, just because I love this place, and uh, uh, it was hard watching the Olympics. I would have loved to compete there as well, because everybody knows I love competing for Switzerland. and. Would have loved to win a medal, but you know you can't have it all. And uh, I, I just hope to be uh, super strong when I come back in January. I was very happy the way that I competed in in Rio, in in all aspects. Uh, and it was difficult after two months and a half without competing, and especially without practicing much. So I was very happy the way that I that I played. And you know when you go to Olympics and finally you win a a medal is just the most important thing that. Uh, that you can do, you know, so just very happy for that. Because of Roger and, and a few other guys is that they've had, a, you know, been willing to try different combinations to try to bring out the best in themselves. And obviously, you know, 
you could say to a Rafael Nadal or Roger Federer, as a coach, you know, pat him on the back and go, hey, play well. And you would look, hey, God, you're a really good coach. You know, to be a captain of maybe the two greatest player in the, in the history of tennis here, I'm, I'm, I think they know what to do and not to do, but I'm, it's, it's, it's difficult. Maybe you come uh, in, ma in the match that maybe something is not working. Maybe I can help or say something.